God has put the story of Abel and Cain into my heart and I've been thinking about it, meditating about it quite often in the last week or so. And it's certainly relevant for today as, as we move on into Jesus' second coming, as we approach the tribulation, the story of Abel and Cain is, is certainly going to be relevant with not only within the body of Christ, not only within professed believers, but more so in religious circles. We're living in a time where people are accepting pluralism. And by that, what we're saying is that all of the religions are ultimately talking about the same thing, that they follow one God. But if any of us have spent time looking into the doctrines and the beliefs of each of the respective religions, we'll come to quickly recognize that that cannot be the case. You, you look at Islam and Christianity, for instance, Islam professes that Jesus is solely a prophet. Islam professes that Jesus Christ didn't even die on the cross, that he was just taken by God. Whereas you have um, Christianity, which says that Jesus is the son of God and that Jesus Christ died on the cross and that on the third day he was resurrected from the dead and that he ascended into heaven. So clearly they can't be the same. They can't be following the same God. There's either one has to be right or one is or one is wrong. And it's exactly the same thing with Judaism and Islam and also with Judaism and Christianity. So the story of Abel and Cain is is important because um, I, I want to read the story, but we know that in the story of Cain and Abel, that both of them knew of God. And that's how it is in the religious circles. There are people within religion who know of God. They believe in one God. We believe in one God. And yet there are going to be some people like Cain who are going to offer up some sacrifices and their sacrifices are going to be rejected and God is not going to have respect unto them. And there are going to be other people like Abel who offer their sacrifices unto God in the right way, in the way in which God has required for us to, to approach him and God is going to have respect unto them. And as we know in the story of, of Abel and Cain, one was wroth and that ultimately ended up with him killing the other in a, in a rage of jealousy. And that's what's going to happen in the scriptures because we know that the saints, are many of them are going to be martyrs. Um, even before Jesus Christ, um, Jesus Christ comes, there's going to be a lot of people who die. And even immediately after Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, there were a lot of martyrs, even in, in, the, in, the, in the Middle Ages, in, in the Dark Ages, Many, many saints were, were, were killed by religious people, even including people within the Catholic Church. So just want to quickly read the story of Abel and Cain. And I just want to, I want to show how that links to salvation. Um, if we go to Genesis 4. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I've gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother. Abel and Abel was a keeper of the sheep and but Cain was a tiller of the ground and in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought out the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord and Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect and Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. So Adam and Eve, they had several children, but their two eldest children were Cain and Abel. Cain was the elder and Abel was the younger. And we can see that in this story here, they got to a level of maturity whereby they wanted to both offer a sacrifice unto God. They both knew of God. They'd heard of God from Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve had undoubtedly told them about their time in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve had informed and had taught their children about the dangers of sin. So they both knew of God and they understood that sin, that it brings about death because Adam and Eve, their parents were, were, were supposed to live forever in, in the presence of God. But once they sinned, once they transgressed, they left the presence of God. And that's exactly the same thing today. There's nothing new under the sun. The more and more that we sin, the more and more we leave the presence of God have you know, have friends that believed in God and their hearts have become hardened because they just continue continue to sin you know the Lord God said that it's our iniquities which separate ourselves from him that he hides our face from us 
when we just when we refuse to 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 obey him we refuse to repent we refuse to hearken on to the good news we refuse to receive his holy spirit that the more and more we do that the more and more we sin the more and more we grow complacent in this world the more that the distance is is separated um from us and god and that's what happened with adam and eve so cain and abel they both undoubtedly understood this and that's why when they they'd reached adolescence they they wanted to both offer a sacrifice unto god to appease his wrath and we hear in the scripture that Cain actually went first. Cain, as the elder, went first, and he offered um, of the ground uh, fruits and, and some vegetables. So he was a farmer. He dealt exclusively with fruits and vegetables. And this is this is symbolic for many of us today because many many religions, many believers of God, many people who profess to have a relationship with God, say that they can please God by their own righteousness by you know, offering the things of the ground that God has provided. They, they may tithe, they may donate a certain amount of their money to the poor. They may pray five times a day. They may do various different carnal ordinances. They may do rosaries 20 times a day. They may sing out to the Lord. They may go to church every single day. They may tithe, you know, 10% of their wages. And in their own eyes, they're righteous. They're, they're they're righteous by their own hands, by their own works. And when they approach God in that way, like Cain, ultimately God is not going to have respect unto them because the scripture says that all of us have sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory, that none of us are going to be justified by our own works. None of us are going to be justified by things which we do in accordance to the law. And what we understand is that Abel understood this, even from all, the, all those years back, Abel understood the ways in which we can appease God's anger. And he understood that without the shedding of blood, that there's no remission of sins. It's always been the same with God. Even when Adam and Eve, they were taken out of the garden, we see that God, he slaughtered an animal and he gave them animal skins. He gave them a covering from their nakedness. And that's always been the way with God. When you look at the days of Moses, when they had the tabernacle and God ordained the Levites to come into his presence and to be his priests, they had to slaughter bulls and, and cows and sheep and various different animals in order to appease the anger of God. And it's the same for us, for we who are in the body of Christ, we who are the saints of the living God, we understand that we have received remission of sins by the shedding of blood through the beloved lamb of god that had no sin the precious lamb of god we know his name the lord jesus christ of nazareth we know his name the the guy the man that died on the cross and resurrected from the dead the guy that lives inside of me he's the one that we receive forgiveness from and abel understood that because it says that he offered up the firstling of his flock he slaughtered the first thing that means the 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 eldest the the best sheep that had no blemish which had no spot and he slaughtered that and he offered that up to God. And it says that God had respect unto his offering. And that lamb is, or that first thing of the flock is a shadow of the Lord Jesus Christ. The lamb of God had no, no blemish, had no spot. He had no sin. He had no guile in his mouth. He was tempted at all manners of time, but he did no wrong. He did no harm to anybody. He loved people. He dwelt in the presence of God from the moment he was conceived of in his mother's womb until the moment he was crucified on the cross he was filled with the holy ghost he went about doing great things healing people and god had ordained it even before the world was created that jesus christ was going to be the man that was going to bring us all who was going to reconcile us who was going to redeem us from all iniquity and bring us back into the presence of god and at me as a witness i used to be a, a former mocker a former scorner i used to laugh at people and say that they were mad in the last three years, I, I felt the power of, of God and I only felt the power of God when I, when I picked up the scriptures, I read the gospels and I started to believe in Jesus Christ and I was baptized in his name. And that's what should encourage us, we as, as believers in, in the Lord Jesus Christ, that we are not being saved. God is not having respect. You know, when I, when I pray to God, when I worship God, when I preach in the name of God, I'm not doing it through my own power. And God is going to have respect unto me because I'm going to be and we're going to be like Abel. And we're going to understand that the only reason why God has respect unto us is because it's because blood has been shed. And that blood is the Lord Jesus Christ. Even as Adam and Eve, once they left the Garden of Eden and they needed a covering from their nakedness, 
and God slaughtered those animals for them to for them to receive that covering. God also slaughtered his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to provide us a covering over me. It's not my righteousness, it's the righteousness of God that's upon me. It's, it's, it's God's garment, it's Jesus's garment, which is over me, which gives me the ability to live a life, and that, a good life, and that's why it's called grace. But Cain did not understand this. Cain thought that he could please God with the things which he, he received from the ground, and that is symbolic for for many different religious people today that think that they can just please God by by tithing or just simply by praying five times or just by doing what they think is right in their eyes, ultimately just by religion. And that is not the way in which we, we've heard God is pleased. There is, there's certainly a way which seems right in our own eyes, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's right in God's eyes. And that's one thing I understood about about Abel and Cain. Abel must have understood God. For him to have for him to have offered up that sacrifice, he must have received revelation from God. And for him to have received revelation from God means that he must have had a personal relationship with God. He mu God must have told him. God must have sent his angel. God must have visited him in a dream for him to sh to, to 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 offer up. He's 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 sheep and to slaughter it because it, it's not like Abel had a, had scriptures. He had a Bible. It's not like Abel had a, a preacher or a pastor or a mediator who was going to tell him. He must have got the revelation directly from God. And you know, Abel understood this, and in faith he offered up the sheep and he slaughtered it. And God had respect unto him. And Cain, Cain, Cain just couldn't. He couldn't tolerate it because it says that. It says that he's he was wroth and his countenance fell and the lord said unto cain verse six why art thou wroth and why is thy countenance fallen if thou doest well shall that not be accepted and if thou doest not well sin life at the door and unto thee shall be his desire and thou shalt rule over him so god is not a respecter of any man god would have accepted cain's sacrifice if sac if cain's sacrifice was appropriate and i think a lot of us fail to understand the nature of god we understand that god has certain principles god is a being i i have certain things that pleases me and i know that if you're my friend that you're you're going to do those things which please me and god is exactly the same god has certain things which pleases him and just because we think that we please God in a certain way just because our religion tells us that's the way to please god it's not it doesn't necessarily mean that that's right that, but what we must do, like Abel did, is seek God and not only seek God 50% of the time, but to seek God wholeheartedly. And that's exactly what Cain did not do. And as a result, it said that he was angry. And it said that it came to pass that Cain talked to Abel, his brother. And when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And that has prophetic um, significance because even in I mean, from Jesus Christ said that from the days of Abel, even unto the days of, of the holy prophets, and even unto his day, and the day after he he died, the day after he resurrected, the day after he ascended into heaven, and the day which followed with the, with his saints. You look at the the lives of Peter, the lives of Paul, the lives of the uh, the martyr Stephen. The all of these people were killed because they were like Abel. And what actually happens is that they, we as, as children of God, when we're like Abel, we understand God, we have a relationship with God. There's going to come a stage in our lives where people are going to behold that God has respect for the sacrifice we've given him. And like Cain, Cain saw that God had respect for Abel's sacrifice, but didn't have respect for his. So Cain was envious, Cain was jealous, and Cain couldn't contain that anger anymore and he couldn't eat you no know, Cain was ultimately very angry at God but Cain couldn't reach God so the, the closest way in which Cain could reach God was by reaching somebody that had God inside of him Cain had you no know, Abel had God dwelling within inside of him so Cain in a rage of, of envy slaughtered Abel and that's how it's always been because the prophets have always been slaughtered Isaiah was was slaughtered there's many other prophets that have been slaughtered. If not slaughtered, then they've been certainly been persecuted like Jeremiah or Ezekiel. 
and the best example is the Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ was certainly like Abel. He understood the ways of God. He had a perfect relationship with God and everybody knew that he was with God. Pontius Pilate knew he was with God. The high priests, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they all knew he was with God because he was doing works which clearly showed he was from God. He was healing blind people. He was casting out demons and he was teaching people about love. He wasn't going out there saying, that, OK, get out your sword and you know, let's rebel. Let's um, revolt against the Romans. No, he was teaching people about peace. He was teaching them about righteousness. He was teaching them about how to grow in a greater depth and level of intimacy with the Lord of hosts. And people, the Pharisees, the religious elders, they who are of the, the seed of Cain, they understood this. And it, they too, driven in, in their, their rage of envy and jealousy, they couldn't do anything but crucify him. That's why Pontius Pilate told them, he said, that I see there's no wrong in this man. You know, that he's got no blemish. He's got no support. He hasn't done anything wrong. All he's, all he's said is that he's the son of God. And yet these people just couldn't tolerate it. They were just like, crucify him, crucify him. We're not having any of it. You know, even Pontius Pilate was like, I, I'll give you, you know, you know, it's, it, it's your custom to release one guy on Passover. Let me release Jesus. And they were like, no, we'll, we'll take Barabbas. We'll take that murderer instead. They hated Jesus. And that's exactly how it's going to be in these last days. When God manifests his power through through the, the, the people of God, the body of Christ, the, the saints of the living God, then what's going to happen is that many of us are going to be martyred. Many of us are going to be killed by those who, who, who are wroth with God and those who cannot who cannot tolerate the truth which is coming out of our mouth but yeah let us always remember you know just to edify us let us always remember that we are, we are not pleasing god by our own righteousness everything that we've received we received from grace i'm here talking about about god talking about the gospel because of the grace of of god that i received when i, I when i believed in jesus christ it's nothing that i've done myself i mean i didn't create myself I, I didn't give myself anything. Everything that I've received, I received from God. So I give praise to God. And that's the way that we should we should see God. We should not think that we're doing God pleasure by, you know, giving him um, five prayers a day or, or whatever sacrifice it may be, whatever or earthly, cardinal, uh, earthly ordinance it may be. But we are only pleasing God when we please him in the way in which he likes to be approached. And that's through the um, through a sacrifice. And that sacrifice is through the shedding of blood. And that that sacrifice, as we well know, was through the Lord Jesus Christ.